<clears throat> okay, so today we're going to take a look at the second half of section 5.3. So yesterday we talked about kites. Today we're going to be talking about trapezoids. Um, so again, we'll start off talking about what, the, what a trapezoid is. Um, and then the main part will be its properties or the things that we know are true about it. So had to put that in there for you. So a trapezoid. Um, a trapezoid is going to be kind of a, a fairly simple shape. You've seen this before. Um, what makes a trapezoid a trapezoid is that it has parallel sides. So you've got this side and this side are parallel to each other. And those two sides are called the bases. So one thing to look out for here is the bases do not have to be the top and bottom. You can certainly turn this shape around uh, and it's still the bases. Um, just the two parallel sides are always referred to as the bases. And then the base angle pairs, it's hard to, hard to write one down, but the base angle pairs in a trapezoid, <clears throat> sorry, um, are going to be the pair of angles at each base. Okay, so you're going to be looking at, I'm going to try to get the right color green here. Um, you're going to be looking at like that one there as one pair of base angles. And then this one here, these two at the top, as another pair of base angles. Okay. So what we're going to be looking at here is, is a few properties of these things. And so the first property we have is the trapezoid consecutive angle conjecture. And so these are talking about two angles, uh, one from each base, but on the same exact side of the trapezoid. Now, in this case, let's do some deductive reasoning here and think about what we know. If I were to draw a line kind of like that and go all the way through, and I know that the top and the bottom here are parallel to each other, Thinking about something that we know, if I were to just put in, oops, um, like an, oh, I do have a link. No, I can't find the linked file. Anyway, um, if I were to look at this measurement here, we would know that this measurement up here is exactly the same. Right? Those are called corresponding angles. So then think about what the relationship is right here. If I put a Y in there, what do I know? about x and y. Well, they're a linear pair. They add up to 180 degrees. And because this angle is also the same as x, my consecutive pair has to be um, supplementary too. They have to add up to 180. So the consecutive angles between bases are supplementary. Now, if you want to not put a, you know, a word like that in there, you could certainly say rather than supplementary that they add up to 180 degrees. That would be a, another good option. So you'll see questions like this. Uh, the you know, first one here, if we want to find X, not so bad. Um, we just need to know that those two angles do add up to 180. And so I'm going to take 180 minus 75. And that's going to equal 105. So I know that X is 105. Sorry, I'm going to do this all on my laptop here. So 105. Now, if you look at these two angles, we've got some algebra to do. Now, the biggest thing, I think I've mentioned this a lot recently, is before you start trying to solve anything, before you start doing any algebra, you need to know what is true before you can do that. And so what I know is that if I took this angle plus this angle, they'd equal 180 degrees. And so I need to write an equation that says that. 10y plus 5 plus 2y minus 5 equals 180. So now that I've got an equation that is true, I can start working on this thing. Um, this, you know, If you just set those, randomly decided to set those equal, that's not true. They're not equal, so that wouldn't have worked. So they add up to 180. Now I can combine my terms. 10y and 2y makes 12y. Plus 5 and minus 5, well, that's just 0 equals 180. And now I just have to divide by 12. In this case, I don't think that comes out as a nice number, but that's okay. 180 divided by 12 on both sides. Oh, it does. Never mind. Y equals 15. 
So that's using the consecutive angles conjecture. Now, most of the conjectures we know about trapezoids are actually going to be true only for special kinds of trapezoids called isosceles trapezoids. And so just like, um, just like in an isosceles triangle, an isosceles trapezoid has two congruent sides. And they do have to be the sides that are not parallel. And just like in isosceles triangles, we call those the legs. So now if I go over here, now let's talk about those base angle pairs. Just like in an isosceles triangle, you can imagine if I extended these up and made this into a triangle, those two would be the base angles of my isosceles triangle. Just like an isosceles triangle, they are equal. I'm not sure why my stuff isn't loading here. Um, but those are going to be equal as well. And so the base angles of an isosceles trapezoid are congruent, or you could put equal, of course. But this is important there only if it's an isosceles trapezoid. Second thing here are the diagonals of an isosceles trapezoid. If I were to connect that line to that line or that point to that point, what would be true about those diagonals? Um, I don't believe I have a, anything linked here, but they are also congruent. Um, this is only true for isosceles trapezoids. If it's not isosceles, well, then it just doesn't work. Now, the reason this is true is because we could prove that there's two triangles are congruent. So in an isosceles trapezoid, we know we've got these two congruent sides, TP and RA. We know we have this shared side, PA and AP. And we also have these base angles congruent, so this angle P and this angle A. So those two triangles are congruent by SS, SAS, and so TA and RP also have to be congruent. You've probably actually seen this picture. We've talked about it last chapter. Okay, so our last little question here before I get to the homework. We've got an isosceles trapezoid, and it says the perimeter is 33, and we're supposed to find a whole bunch of these things. So a few different things you could start off with. The angles and the sides are going to be pretty much separate here. Um, <clears throat> and so if we're talking about the angles, let's start with that maybe. If I have 80 here, we've got a couple of conjectures that might help. The first thing is, since it's isosceles, it says it's isosceles there, the base angles are equal. Any trapezoid also has consecutive angles, A and 80, that add up to 180. So A has to be 100. Next thing I might do is, well, I know that these two sides are equal. So I can write an equation. 2Z plus 6 equals 4Z plus 4. <clears throat> I know those are equal, and I can solve that equation. And so what I might want to do is subtract 2Z from both sides. and then subtract four from both sides, and then I can divide by two. And so I get that z is one. Now, in order to find x, I'm going to need to use the perimeter, and I'm also gonna to need to know all of these sides. So if z is one, this side is eight, just by plugging in one for z. This side is also eight. And then if z is again one, this side is seven. So now I can look at my perimeter and say, okay, 33 is the whole thing, and I know three of the sides, what's left over for the last side? So 33 minus 7 and minus my two sides of 8. Sorry, just a second here. So 33 minus 7 minus 8 minus 8 is 10. And so I know this last side has to be 10 because that's the only way that this is going to add up to 33. So the homework or the practice for today is, again, pretty short. It's only uh, six questions total. And so this is the exact same page as last time, just doing the questions about trapezoids now. Um, be careful on, on which ones are isosceles. If they're marked isosceles, then they're isosceles. If the question says it's isosceles, then it's isosceles. Um, but just be careful that you, you don't assume something's isosceles if it's not. Almost all the questions we're going to talk about are about isosceles trapezoids because that's the ones we know the most about. So take a second to, or not a second, take a few minutes to go through those. It's six questions. It'll take you, you know, not too long, um, but do check your answers. I'll have those posted here, um, hopefully before the end of the day, but I want you to try them out first. Um, and then tomorrow <clears throat> in class, we're just going to spend our time making sure that if you're in the B group, we're all caught up and ready to go on Monday with everybody. 
and I will see you all on Monday.